Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about cytokinesis, specifically focusing on two IB understandings, D212 and D213. D212 states that students should appreciate that in animal cells, a ring of contractile actin and myosin proteins pinches a cell membrane together to split the cytoplasm, whereas in a plant cell, vesicles assemble sections of membrane and cell wall to achieve the splitting. And D213 includes the idea that division of cytoplasm is usually equal, however it's not always equal, and that both daughter cells must receive at least one mitochondrion and all of the other organelles that can only be made by dividing a pre-existing structure. Include oogenesis in humans and budding in yeast as examples of unequal cytokinesis, which this video will finish with. So the first thing we need to do is talk about cytokinesis in terms of what that first understanding really stated. There are two types of cells in eukaryotic cell structure, animal cells and plant cells. In animal cells, like the understanding said, there is a ring or a contractile ring of microfilaments which are made of those actin and myosin contractile proteins. As this microfilament ring or contractile ring contracts, it forms this cleavage furrow which is the pinching in of the cell membrane before it completely snaps apart and therefore completes cytokinesis which is the splitting of the cytoplasm. In plant cells, they contain a really rigid cell wall which cannot be contracted uh, or pinched in in the middle and so therefore there are vesicles that are secreted by the Golgi apparatus that contain cellulose that are going to be sent to this cell plate which is formed in the middle where the new cell wall will be made and as those vesicles secrete the cellulose based components into this cell plate it forms the new cell wall which eventually forms the division of the cytoplasm which would be therefore cytokinesis in the plant cells. Cytoplasm usually splits evenly. Cell division usually leads to genetically identical daughter cells. Cell division is necessary for growth and repair. As past videos indicated, each cell receives a full copy of the parent cell's DNA and some of the essential organelles. At least one mitochondria must end up in each daughter cell to ensure cell survival because mitochondria are instrumental in aerobic respiration which, as you may recall, is the formation of ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, that is the energy source for the cell. Plant cells have to produce at least one chloroplast, which chloroplasts, unlike the mitochondria, are the photosynthetic organelle. And therefore, those plant cells must possess the chloroplast in order to uh, possess the ability to photosynthesize. However, cytokinesis can be uneven, and like the second understanding indicated, oogenesis in female gamete production and yeast budding are two examples that IB really wants you to know about. So, so when we talk about oogenesis, this is a process by which four haploid cells are produced. Now, it only looks like one haploid cell is made, and that's because through meiosis one and two, we are producing these polar bodies which eventually get reused and recycled within the female tissue. However, three of the four cells donate their cytoplasm and organelles to the fourth cell and are not used as egg cells or mature egg cells because they are much too small to produce a viable zygote. This video really isn't about the intricacies of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. That's going to come in a later video. However, for now, all you really need to understand is that during oogenesis, which is the production of mature female ovum, we have to undergo, or females have to undergo, meiosis 1 and 2, which is the division of the nucleus twice through meiosis 1 and 2 in order to produce haploid mature gametes. So the way that this process works is that the chromosomes are going to line up as homologous pairs, those homologous pairs are going to be separated. The homologous pairs will be even, however, the cytoplasm is going to be split unevenly, meaning just enough cytoplasm is going to be packaged into this cell, which is enough to just hold the chromosome so that we can still separate the chromosomes e evenly, and 90% of the cytoplasm will be retained, as well as 100% of the organelles will be retained within the secondary oocyte. When the secondary oocyte then goes through meiosis II, it will split the sister chromatids, package the chromatids equally among the two new daughter cells, if you will, package those chromatids in just enough cytoplasm, again, to get them out of the cell, 
and retain, again, roughly 90% of the cytoplasm as well as 100% of the organelles within this oatid, which will eventually become the mature ovum. All of these polar bodies are designed to be placeholders, temporary placeholders, for the chromosomes that will eventually be discarded and will be returned to the body in order to get to this mature ovum. The unequal cytokinesis provides the zygote with the resources it needs to survive until it is implanted in the walled uterus. Again, the zygote is produced as a result of fertilization of this mature ovum with a sperm cell. In yeast cells, this would be a form of asexual reproduction called budding, and this is a process in which the parent yeast cells generate small sections called buds that develop until they are ready to be on their own, at which point they completely separate from the parent, and this budding process continues as more and more and more daughter buds are produced. This is again asexual reproduction and again shows a, uh, an unequal distribution of the cytoplasm through this cytokinesis event. When the daughter cells become big enough to survive on its own, cytokinesis closes the cell membrane and each cell is independent organism. All of these, as you can see, are different cells. They're different organisms. They are free living. This one, obviously the largest, they continually bud and get smaller as they go, but those smaller ones will eventually grow and become a new parent cell, but Again, it is an example of uneven cytokinesis. If you learned something in this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see ya.